decisions to make. Okay, so this, this is it. Like one year of waiting, that's a long time. Here it is. It's like an entire, it's an entire bike. I'll just pull it up like this. My Brian Ward bike. All road gravel tires, uh, custom paint job, custom frame, uh, 853 Reynolds frame set, steel, SRAM Force group set, Chris King headset. I'm just gonna take it for a short ride around here just to see how it is. This is my, so this is the first ride I'll ever do on this bike. That was really great. It was the best ride I've ever had. I'm sorry, this is embarrassing. Let's take it outside for a spin. Okay, I made it outside. This is actually the third time I'm riding this bike now. It's a Sunday, nice weekend, 19 degrees Celsius outside. Uh, running 60 PSI in the tires. It's 30 millimeter tires, so they're quite more comfortable than one, one the 25mm uh, that I'm used to. I'm also running a new kit today. So I emailed Isadora Apparel asking if I could try out some of their stuff. And they sent back a couple of kits for me and Helena to try out. So the bike is Reynolds 853 steel. And I chose that because I wanted to have a bike like, this is my dream bike, and I thought I should spend some money on it. It's like 3,500 euros. Built by the Brian Ward guys in Stoke and Trent. Stoke and Trent, famous for Robert Williams, in the pottery industry. And I'll tell you more about that later. But I wanted a bike that I can have for a long time, so that's why I went for steel, because I think that seems to be a good option. And I wanted it to be able to ride both tarmac and gravel, or because there are a lot of those roads around here in Sweden. And I wanted to have through through axle bolts and disc brakes. So, and I also I wanted to make it some kind of adventure of getting this bike. I mean, I could get the same expensive bike from a bike shop just around the corner, but it would be a better story and adventure when I tell about. How I went to Stoke on Trent to get this bike. So, like last Octo October, me and Helena took a flight to Manchester, stayed there for the weekend, and I had a fitting uh, at Brian Work Cycles on the Friday. It took us all day, which is okay. It was amazing. So, how does it ride? Um, it runs really smooth. Uh, and feels like it's going very much straight forward, but riding like this with it, like the possibility of getting it, being able to get out in gravel, that is a real big positive thing, just to be able to get out on the smaller roads. <coughs> Me and Helena booked a flight in October last year. To Manchester, we stayed there over the weekend, and I spent um, eight hours on a Friday um, doing a fitting together with Wayne of what my bike would fit like and what the components would be that I wanted to have on it. Um, and I had, when I came there, I had this vague idea of what I wanted it to be like the, the bike it, to fit wider tires so I can go on gravel and different kind of roads like that. And I also wanted to. Uh, have um, some kind of rack that I could put uh, panniers on later on, and I and I had this idea of the paint scheme. That's 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 the idea I had when I came there, and I realized that it's kind of hard to. You have this dream in your head, and it's not really clear when you decide to build a design your own bike because there are so many small details in this, the design process that didn't have, I never thought about. Uh, and that was really difficult to do those kind of decisions while I was there during that day because it was also like when we started to build and put things together I just 
really fast realized how fast my budget went. Wayne that helped me design the bike, he was really helpful. He, uh, he put me on this uh, trainer with a CAD 10 58 centimeter frame Cannondale. Uh, and I think they kind of based that the, this geometry out of that one. Like, uh, it's not gonna, it was not going to be the fastest bike ever built uh, or the lightest. It's just like a robust thing that's going to last for a long time. That's what I wanted, I think. Every time something happened with, with the frame or like the welding or the painting, they posted on Facebook and, or on Instagram and tagged me on it in the end now. And that was really amazing to see the process, to be a part of the process. And I think that's, in a way, what you're paying for when you get a custom frame or a, or a custom bike. You want to be closer to the process and you want to be able to know who is doing what on your bike. Okay, so if I were to do this again, I would be more patient because uh, I was not really prepared to, I was, I was not really prepared to wait that long to get my bike. Um, in the initial kind of emailing, we were talking about seven months or I got my bike now, last week. So that's almost, that's 11 months waiting. And I think I would be okay with that if I knew that that's gonna be the time that they deliver it in the beginning of my waiting. But now I was expecting it to be seven months instead of 11. Okay, so that's it. I mean, there's probably tons of things I haven't really answered. Uh, in this video, if you have any more, if you have any questions, uh, just ask them in the comments below, and I'll maybe I'll do another update video about the bike, or uh, I'll just answer them down in the comments. Uh, if you like videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Uh, I post every Thursday now, and I will hopefully do that through the winter and next summer. So uh, stay with me, and see you next time.